Aloha and welcome back to Practical Printing and welcome to part 12 of our CME CNC Rostock Max V 3.2 build series. If you haven't been following along, I strongly urge you to click the link up in the corner there and go back and check out the previous episodes in the series so that you're caught up with where we're at in the build process. There's a link in the description to the manual if you'd like to follow along. If you're not familiar with CME CNC's line of Delta printers, there's a link in the description over to them as well if you would like to learn more about the Rostock Max printer that we are building. So without further ado, let's do it. Welcome back. At the end of the last segment of the series, we just finished wiring up the duet board and we pulled two wires out for a connection later to the fuse holder. So that places us at step 46. We're going to install the little wheels that hold the cover onto the top plate. And then we're going to jump ahead and skip for step 47 for now. And I'll explain why later. And then we're gonna go on to soldering up the fuse holder. So let me switch cameras and let's get started. Because you can see I don't even have the printer out right just yet. So the first thing that we're going to need is the top plate here. We're going to need four of the 1 inch 632 screws. And of course the nuts. We're going to need four of the bed clips, the plastic bed clips. Well, we've got a lot of glare there. There we go. And we're going to need the four wheels that look like that. Hopefully you didn't throw those away. They were in a plastic bag taped to the box. So this is very simple. We're going to want to make sure that we have the writing up like so. That's going to be our top. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to drop the nut. We're going to drop the nut through the plastic piece, drop that through one of the four corner holes on this cutout, hold it with our finger and flip it over. Going to drop on one of the laser cut discs like so, and we're just going to hand tighten on one of the nylock nuts. I'm gonna do the same thing for these other three, and then we're going to tighten it down. Let me go ahead and do that in high speed for you. Okay, that is done. We have our four plates on and what those are going to do is slide out of the way like so to open that up and they're going to allow for dropping this piece in like so and then they're going to clamp on to cover it up. And that is the top of your printer like so. Okay, now 40, step 47 tells us to install this onto the printer. We're actually going to skip that step for now and come back and do it later. The reason I'm doing that is because starting on step 48, we're going to be start wiring up the fuse holder and it will be a lot easier for me to get the camera in to show you that without the top plate on. So let's pause here. I'm going to break out the printer and the stuff that we need for the next steps and we'll go back from there. Okay, I've got everything here that we need for the next step, uh, starting on 48. We're going to need the fuse panel here. We're going to need the two fuse holders. And you're going to need the length of 12 gauge black wire and the short length of 18 gauge red wire. Tools wise right now, you're also going to need uh, your flush cuts and wire strippers, as well as a soldering iron um, your tip cleaner and of course solder and then I'm going to show you a couple of tricks that I like to use when when soldering these fuse holders. So the first thing that we want to do is actually take the fuses out, the glass fuses out, and we're going to just set those aside for now. 
I want to do that before soldering these on because you don't want the heat from the soldering iron to pop the fuse. Then you're going to unscrew the nut on the back here of each of these and slide them off. And we're going to install these into here with the hook facing the direction of the heated bed 15 amps. So it's going to go that way and it's keyed so it should just drop right in. Easier said than done. Let's do that with the other side. And then we're going to flip it over and of course I forgot to remove the paper. How do you like that? Never fails. Well, how did I miss that one? Okay, you're going to take your nuts and put those back over it and tighten them down. Make sure that it's not cross-threaded. It should go on nice and easy, like so. Let's do the other one here. Nice and easy, like so. Okay, now let's look at the top. This side is the hot end and this side is the heated bed. So we're going to flip that over. So hot end, heated bed. Okay. And the red is going to go to the hot end side. The black is going to go to the heated bed. So I'm going to start off stripping off just about a quarter of an inch or so off the end of the red wire. Do a little twist. And then I'm going to do the same for our black wire here. Just about a quarter of an inch or three eighths or so. Now we have two wires to solder onto these. And actually, let me show you. There's two tabs. There's this main tab here, and there's another tab here. This tab is going to be the hardest one to get access to. You can't see that. The main tab and then this top tab. This one's going to be the hardest one to get access to when it's up on top of the printer here. So we're going to go ahead and solder these two wires to the top and basically treat that as our input. It really doesn't matter but I'm going to, uh, which one you use, but I think that'll just make it a little bit easier. So I'm going to try to prop that up with something to keep it from sliding over. At least give us a little bit of, nope, that's as good as it's going to get for now. Okay, and then I'm going to show you a trick um, with these. We've got a pair of mini vice grips here. And so the hot end's going to be red. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just slightly feed that wire into the hole. You want as much contact as possible. Then I'm going to use these to kind of pinch the wire in place like so. So I don't have to hold it. And let's try to get that to go upright. Like so. Now we can get our soldering iron out, get our tip cleaned up nice and good. Get a little bit of solder on to tin it. And we're going to slide that there. Going to wick that in slowly and allow that to flow on. And voila, we have a solid solder. Now I can take off my little vice grips and we have a good solid solder. Let's try that again from this side here with the larger one. Uh, 
and that's hard to show. Okay, so now our next step is to take these two wires hanging out up here and solder them to the other two posts. So let's go up top here and we're going to take our two wires. I'm not going to remove any length from these. We're just going to strip back about the same amount of wire. And we're going to solder those onto the plate. Now this one is a little bit harder because you don't have anything to clamp to. What I can do, while well, that's still warm, is use an alligator clip here to hold those together. And I'm going to use my vise You can't see this yet, but I'll show you in just a second. Let me open that up a little bigger. Okay, so I used, there we go. Just use an alligator clip to try to hold these wires together, like so. In fact, I'll use two of them. And the same vice grips over here, uh, you can't see it in the picture, but the same vice grips that I used to hold the wire around down at the other side is what I actually used to hold this, plant, uh, this plate to the top here like this. So let's try to get this through here again. Use a couple of alligator clips just to keep the tension off of there until we can solder. I'm going to take a set of needle nose and try to maximize that so that we have the most contact between the wire and the tab. And now we get to have some fun with solder. All right, that looks good. It's really hard to do it at this angle. Now we're going to do the same thing with this one and this one should be theoretically a little bit easier. Okay, while that cools, let's look at this side. And that looks good. We take these two wires and pull them back up into here like so. The black wire is going to go to here and the red wire is going to go over here which you can't see in that view. So let me get the soldering iron turned off and cooled off and moved out of the way and change the angle here so that you can see this.